UFC St. Louis, this is the Weigh-In Recap Show, full card predictions and the betting breakdown. I'm looking forward to talking about each of the matchups on this card after seeing the fighters on the scales. So make sure you guys smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notifications on and make sure you share the video as well. And also note I'll be live for the entire UFC St. Louis fight card Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss the fight, companion. And let's get into our first fight on the card. Ladies going after it. We got Veronica Hardy versus J.J. Aldrich. I'm going to pick Veronica Hardy. She's consistently improving. And I honestly think J.J. Aldrich is like incredibly average tier. Not that Veronica Hardy has looked exceptional by any means. But at 28, there is a potential for farther growth than Aldrich, who's 31. Now, the scales I'm not anticipating are going to play much of a serious factor in this fight. Both girls were on weight. Battle of Southpaws. I think Hardy's going to win. I think she gets it on the cards. We will look at the ladies on the scales. Let me shrink myself down so I'm not obnoxiously large here. And let's check out Aldrich first. I mean, she's in good shape. I can't really say much bad about her. I got no roast. For J.J. Aldrich, she's the first fight of the night. It's a women's bout. Veronica Hardy on the other front, uh, you know, representing Dan Hardy here. She's uh, kind of getting led to water and actually drinking as far as her skill set's going. Like, you know, she's got a good mind in her, uh, you know, husband's fight skills and knowledge. And it seems like she's evolving well. Aldrich is nothing special, and that's the truth to be told here. If Hardy's going to do anything in the UFC, she's going to have to win this fight here. I'm going to predict that she does. So we're going to pick her. Let's go face off, though. Damn, you know what? Aldridge is a little bit bigger. She got a little bit of those love handles on the side. She's a little thick. She could get down to 115 if she, uh, you know what I'm saying, started to jump on a maybe a slightly cleaner diet. I'm seeing the love handles, gang. Now I'm roasting her hard. But serious note, the fight goes distance. The fight goes hardy by decision. I think that's what's going to happen here. Ladies fight to start the night. If you're betting on it, Best of luck to you. The odds are favoring Veronica Hardy at minus 144. On the other side, Aldrich plus 124. Aldrich is pretty experienced in the UFC. And that's why like, I went over as the high confidence. But my God, what are we doing over? What do we got? Minus 500 for the over two and a half rounds. What are we doing with that? Nothing. We're doing zero with it. Unfortunately, uh, it's even kind of crappy in a long shot parlay, but I guess more in your longer shots. Uh, Hardy to win by a decision, minus 110. The official pick is going to be Hardy by decision. I think she can beat J.J. Aldrich. Is Hardy jumping me up and down as a prospect? No. And I think... This fight here is kind of like a measuring stick. Last time it was Jamie Lynn Horth, who's inexperienced. It's not a great bet on Hardy, I don't think. It's a close money fight. I think the line deserves to be even. And now you're throwing down minus 140 for Hardy and what's a minus 110 fight. I'm picking Hardy to win. Let's jump to the next one, man. Fucking rambling about this damn fight. I want to get to the next damn fight on the card. The next fight, we have Jake Hadley versus Charles Johnson. Interesting. I'm picking Charles Johnson. I think the underdog is going to win this fight here. I like his chances of success. I've been picking him all week long. I like the stand-up game. I like the takedown defense. I like the striking skill set, the pro boxing and kickboxing experience. Jake Hadley on the other front, I think he's an overrated Brit. He started uh, you know, coming into UFC, what, 8-0? And the wins are not impressive. Candelario and Malcolm Gordon, they don't impress me as far as wins go. I think Charles Johnson from the outside will find success. I think he has a physical strength edge and could even uh, get on top of Hadley. I do think Hadley's going to look to rest a little bit, but Johnson's going to be pretty hard to deal with as far as takedown defense goes. Now, let's check him out on the scales and let's see. Is there anything to know? Is there anything that looks, you know, menacing here? Well... There's something that looks menacing. Holy shit, the fucking missing tooth over here. Now I got to shrink myself, but you guys can still see the teeth, and that's what it's really all about. Forget the physique. Holy shit, the uh, the missing front tooth look, man. I would have kept in the fake cap, bro. I would have kept it in. I wouldn't have flexed out looking like that. He, he, looks, he looks about as British as it gets with that missing tooth right there. So uh, next one, where's Charles Johnson at? Where's our guy? 
We had Charles Johnson on the ceremonial scales up top, but we're not looking at that. We're looking at the official scales. Charles Johnson looking solid, and you can't see his haircut here, so that should give you more confidence. There's no rat tail flying from the side, but it is there. I'll let you guys know the bad haircut is just the Charles Johnson specialty. Now, as far as the face-offs between these two, let's bring it up. Let me get this for you guys here. Where is it at? We got the face-off. We got Cowboy Charles Johnson rocking the uh, the hat with the camo look for Jake Hadley. What is the scales telling us here that the fight's going to go how I thought of it going on paper? It's going to be a Charles Johnson close decision. Three hard rounds. The underdog should be the winner. I'm sticking with my original pick. There's no change in the confidence. There's no wilt. We're going Charles Johnson to win. Now it's plus 108 for Charles Johnson. The lines come down a bit. It was up at plus 125. And then Jake Hadley on the other front, minus 128. I think that we'll see a win for Charles Johnson by a decision. Over rounds is minus 260 for the flyweights. I'm anticipating over. Johnson by decision is plus 200. Yeah, we're going Charles Johnson to win. There's no shift in my confidence after the weigh-ins or anything like that. There's no uh, anxiousness coming my way on Johnson, really. I mean, I think I'll be nervous when the fight's commencing as a good underdog call. Uh, but I don't think Jake Hadley's very good. He's got a real wide stance. Maybe even we'll see Johnson attacking the legs a little bit here. So we're going Charles Johnson to win. Feeling good about it. Let's keep on running up. Our next fight... On the card, we got Trey Waters versus Billy Goff. I'm going with the underdog lock this week with Billy Goff. I had to go dog savagery, man. I had to ride with an underdog. And I'm happy that I did because a high-confidence pick for me was Kevin Jusset, and that fight's canceled. So Billy Goff to get it done. I think TKO is live here. I know that he's going to be at a fair disadvantage of size with Trey Waters, and you'll see it in a moment. Uh, we'll look at him on the scales first, and then I will bring up the face off. But Billy Goff looked jacked. He looks sick, man. Trust your gut. He's got the savage tattoo. And you know what? I'm trusting my gut in picking Billy Goff to win this fight. He looks like an absolute chatted up dude. Kind of got like a uh, more classy version of the mullet. How could you not be on his side? If I didn't shrink myself down, which I didn't, my apologies. My apologies. All right. Trey Waters, he's giving me Ryan Spam vibes, bro. He's looking a little sleepy here. I don't know how to describe it. He looks a little tired. And he's 6'5 at 170. That's absolutely crazy. Granted, he's not the only 6'5", 170-pounder on the card. It just makes no damn sense to me. Now, let's check out the face-off between these two. And let's see how they look going face-to-face, nose-to-nose. I think, you know what? The fight is going to go how I'm anticipating it. You can see Billy Goff. More jacked, stockier, shorter, but really not stocky in a negative. He's well built. On the other side, you got Trey Waters, who's real slim and long. The problem with Trey Waters is simple, guys. He's a point fighting style, right? He's going to be trying to tee up Billy Goff for three rounds and sniping him from range, whereas Billy Goff is going to find the opportunities to close the gap and make this a very dirty fight in close, and that's where he's going to absolutely thrive. And I think Trey Waters is getting folded, man. I think we're going to see Billy Goff get a finish. I'm going Goff, KO, TKO. Now, as far as the odds for the fight... Goff is plus 145 as a dog, and he's kind of, you know, held steady around this line. At open, he was the favorite, but it flipped to the plus money. I think Billy Goff's a good underdog. I think people are falling into the he's 6'5", Trey Waters mentality, right? So, yeah, they, there's a bit of a height difference, but, like, you saw them going face-to-face. A little bit of an overhand. I don't care if you're 6'5". Your chin is not above 5'10", 5 5'11". 5 and I think Billy Goff is going to find a lot of success in this fight. And I think at plus 145, he's a tremendous underdog call on my front. And I'm feeling damn good about it. Under 2.5, minus 175. I'm going Goff. Money line, best call. I do think we're going under. Goff by KO, the official prediction, sitting at plus 325. Damn, more than 3-1 to one action on that. I think Billy Goff takes it home for us. Good prospect on the come up. I think Trey Waters is going to try to dance with him from the outside. And Goff is going to turn it into like a, a brawl. A barn burning type swanging and banging slugfest type fight. And that is exactly what I want from him. That's what I'm looking for. So we're going with Billy Goff 
to get the win. I think he should look pretty badass in this fight. And I think that he's uh, taken out the side of Trey Waters. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep on running up the card. Next fight on the card, we have it between Tabitha Ritchie and Tisha Torres. Now, listen, Tisha Torres in her prime, hell to deal with for a ton of these ladies, including a prime version of Tabitha Ritchie. Issue is, Tisha Torres recently had a kid. She's 34, nearly 35. Tabitha's on a roll. So I've been picking Tabitha Ritchie by decision all week long, but I don't think Tabitha Ritchie is like elite tier by any means. And Tisha Torres has fought some of the best in the world in the women's strawweight division. And I think she's a hard fight for Ritchie. So to me, cautionary tale if you got it all down on Tabitha Ritchie. As far as the scales, let's check them out. Let's see how everybody's looking. Let's see how these savages are looking here. All right, where is Tabitha Ritchie? Where are you? There's Tabitha Ritchie. Listen, you know what? Great shape, stylish hair, great look. You know what you get with Tabitha Ritchie. She draws a lot of male attention in the fight game. A lot of the eyes are drawn on her, and she's uh, most single dude's favorite fighter. Now, on the opposite side, you got Tisha Pennington, Tisha Torres, who's now married to uh, UFC bantamweight champ Raquel Pennington. She's had kids, but you know what? To be fair, it doesn't look like her frame is substantially different. I don't know how the internals will go. I don't know how it'll end up going on fight night, but she is still pretty jacked. I want to look at this face-off, this side-to-side, -side, because I think this will help us a lot to determine what's going to go down here, at least in a sense. Not to necessarily tell you that I got the answer key just from the face-off, but... Tisha looks fucking jacked. She looks shredded. And she had a kid recently. That's crazy. Tabitha Ritchie looks jacked shredded too. This is going to be a good fight. I think it's a close one, man. Really close. I'm going to say Tabitha Ritchie takes it 29-28 on the judges' scorecards. But Tisha Torres is still pretty game. Good shit. I'm excited for this fight, yo. As far as the odds for the matchup here. The odds for this fight. We have... Tabitha Ritchie, minus 140 as the favorite. Tisha Torres, plus 120. Tisha Torres is not easy to deal with, man. That's the truth to be told. Mackenzie Dern split decision loss last time. I know it was two years ago. But she's a tough out for a lot of these girls. Ritchie by decision, plus 110. Torres by decision, plus 160. I think we're going over two and a half, but it's minus 400. I'm going to say Tabitha Ritchie, 29-28. That is my official pick. Um, but Tisha Torres is tricky, man. Fast hands, physically strong girl, good wrestling defense, explosive, has fought some of the best in the game. It's just she's no longer primed, at least on paper. They literally have the same height and reach. So good fight. I'm going to go Tabitha Ritchie by decision. Let's keep on running up. Let's keep on running this card through. Next fight on the card, we got Terrence McKinney versus Esteban Rebovic. I'm going with Terrence McKinney to win in the first round. I'm taking him as an underdog here. I do think he can beat Esteban Rebovic, but like we always have to worry about Terrence McKinney because the gas tank is always a problem. Uh, the mental span of like uh, attention is low, and he ends up, uh, you know, kind of mentally fatiguing in fights and taking fat outs. Not saying he has a great gas tank either, but he falls apart after the first round. Esteban Rebovic was in bad spots on the ground in round one with Camuela Kirk, dog. That should tell you something. That should tell you something. That should tell you that Terrence McKinney has a very live chance to finish this fight in the first round. I'm going with Terrence McKinney to get it done. I know his last two wins are against meh tier at best. And Esteban last time fought Kirk, who's meh, and it's a decision, dog. Esteban Rubovic's minus 165. If Terrence McKinney's got anything left in his UFC career, he's going to get a finish in this fight. Let's, let's find Terrence McKinney here. He's got to beat Esteban. All right, where's Esteban? All right, Air Esteban, you're up to the bat first. Okay, Esteban Rebovic is in real fucking good shape, man. He's got the menacing light eyes, which is concerning, man. I don't know. Uh, I hope that Terrence McKinney isn't intimidated, bro. Because Esteban Rebovic is chatted up, man. He's a Hispanic chad. He's like a fucking Julio. And then we got McKinney. 
I don't know how to describe it. He just doesn't look great to me. Not that the physique isn't great. Just something looks off about him. Something doesn't look great. I hope that come fight, he does. I don't know. You guys see what I'm saying? I got to shrink myself a little more. And let me bring up the face off. But you see what I'm saying or am I, or, or am I delirious? Let me know in the comments. Terrence McKinney looks weird here. Something's off. I hope that he proves me wrong, but it looks like he lost his magic. Like, you've seen Austin Powers when they stole his mojo? That's what I'm feeling with Terrence McKinney. So if he gets beaten in the second round, I won't be shocked. There's, honestly, Rebovix has way bigger arms. It's kind of crazy looking at him side by side. You wouldn't think that just looking from the front. I don't think Rebovix is that good, man. If Terrence McKinney has any hope left in his UFC career, he beats Esteban. If he loses... Wash my hands, bro. The Terrence McKinney hype is gone forever. Plus 130 for T-Rex, Terrence McKinney. Minus 155 for Esteban Rebovix. The under is minus 220. I think McKinney in round one, which is plus 220, but upwards of plus 300. Rebovix in round two, plus 450. Maybe that's your bet. You're going round one McKinney, Rebovix round two. Then Terrence McKinney somehow gets a fucking decision. McKinney by decision is plus 1,200. They don't believe that he can win a decision at all. The money line's not bad, though, for the plus side of plus 135 McKinney. <sighs> These wins are, are, are not good opposition, to be fair. Like, his best UFC wins for Terrence McKinney, unfortunate to say. Like, they came here at the early run. Frivola and Ziam are big wins, but that was in 2021 and early 2022. That was a long time ago. Then you see the losses here. Darek Minner loss. That was a terrible loss. But he went on a good roll, though. To be fair, he had a good streak going for himself. Losses are against decent guys, though. Drew Dober, Bonefim, and Sadikov. Uh, there's not a ton of shame in losing to those guys. And I do think that he can pull it off against Esteban Rebovic. How many decision wins we got from McKinney? Zero. Never won by decision. Never lost by decision. No. He probably gets a first-round finish. I'm going to say sub because I saw the success that Camuela Kirk had taking the back of Esteban. He's just not good enough, obviously, to get the finish. I think that Terrence McKinney can win by finish. I think submission or knockout, but McKinney to finish the fight. I think McKinney in the first round, underdog Terrence McKinney call. Let's jump to our next one, which is the featured prelim of the night. We got Chase Hooper versus Vyacheslav Barshev. I've been picking Vyacheslav Barshev to get the win over Chase Hooper. I really think that he could knock Chase Hooper out. There's not a substantial size difference between these two as far as the height goes. Chase Hooper is now up at 155 pounds. Barshev hits really fucking hard. And I think Chase Hooper lacks the wrestling skill set to absolutely starch control and, and work Borshev. And Borshev's loss to Mark Jacasey. Jacasey's a jacked takedown artist at this point. I know Jacasey was always known for his striking, but he's a fucking grinder at this point. And then Mike Davis is jacked as well, and he's a pretty good fighter too. My shot they win. Draw with Sadikov. It's not a terrible draw there. Uh, the Jordan Levitt submission was impressive, but again, Levitt is a, a slow twitch wrestler only style. Nick Fiore is not very good. Uh, he's okay, and he had some grappling moments. Obviously, Steve Garcia chinned him, and then Steven Peterson decision. He beat the the late Philippe Kolaris, rest in peace. But that was down to forty five. Let's look at the scales here. Let's see what we're looking at. Let's see what we can see. Let's see. Let's find our guy, Chase Hooper. Up to bat. All right. So, to be fair, there is evidence of a little bit of muscle tissue being put on with Chase Hooper. But to me, like, he looks like the friendly kid in high school. Like, you would never have thought he would have been a pro fighter. You'd expect him to be the guy helping you with calculus homework, not helping you kicking someone's ass. So, respect to Chase Hooper for going against all stereotypes here and uh, becoming a pro fighter. I respect the grind. And then on the other side, Vyacheslav Barshev. So from the neck down, he looks in pretty good shape, and he's ready to go. From the neck up, he looks like a damn homeless crack addict. Holy shit. Uh, the extra long beard is out. I don't know, man. Even maybe like a slight pirate look for him. Not a great look right now for Vyacheslav Barshev. I personally uh, would recommend, you know, Trimming the beard a little bit. I don't know. It gives bum vibes with that, that dusty looking beard. 
And uh, I'm telling you, if you saw him sitting outside of a fucking Home Depot, I don't know, you, you probably think he would be homeless. Now let's look at the face-offs between the two. Not a big height difference, not much of a size difference. I know Barsha have kept the uh, shirt on, but it don't really matter here. Chase Hooper's not known for the physique. Uh, I think Barshev finds the chin. I don't think Chase Hooper would be successful in subbing him. Chase Hooper, he's trying to thicken up, and I respect it, but he's still only 24. Barshev is literally putting all his fucking time into improving the subpar grappling skills, and I think he should be able to knock out Chase. Vyacheslav Barshev is minus 137, the favorite. Chase Hooper is a plus 117 underdog. Uh, Barshev by KO, plus 110. I think it's pretty live. I think Barshev rocks Chase Hooper on the feet and knocks him out. Hooper by sub, plus 215, if you're on that side. Uh, but I do think Barshev is going to win. I think he wins by KO. I don't think Chase Hooper can take a real clean shot from Barshev. Hooper does not respond well to punches. And Barshev is going to punch him in the face really hard. So we're going Barshev by KO. All right. Let's keep running up and let's jump to our main card opener. If you guys haven't yet... Make sure you smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We got Waldo Cortez Acosta versus Rebellis de Spain in this fight right here. I'm picking Rebellis de Spain, and I have been all week. I think he can knock Where's Waldo out. I do think de Spain's a nasty prospect still. I know some people have kind of like stepped away from the hype train and thought, ah, well, no, Waldo's the guy to beat him. He's 11 and 1. I don't buy it, man. Waldo's been knocked out in boxing. It's time for him to get knocked out in MMA. This is the truth be told, man. All right, where's our guy, where's Waldo? Where's, where's Waldo? He's at the top. Where's Waldo is up first here. I mean, not a terrible frame from him, but he does look really fucking angry on the scale. He reminds me of uh, your uncle who just got yelled at by your aunt at the barbecue. He's that level of fucking angry. He's pissed off. I think he's coming into this fight mad. Maybe it's because he's a dog. I don't know. He looks like an angry Waldo Cortez Acosta. Maybe he's mad he lost fans after disrespecting our guy Arlovsky. Then on the other side, we got Rebellis de Spain. Very good shape. Kind of uh, Kevin Randleman esh Like blend Kevin Randleman, a little bit of Michael Jordan in there to give him the height and like, I don't know, some unknown Cuban. And then boom, the baby of that equals Rebellis de Spain. I think he's going to look good, man. I'm a Rebellist to Spain believer. I got to fucking shrink myself. I'm absolutely covering it. I'm a Rebellist to Spain believer, though. I think he can pull this off. I think he's jacked and in great shape and ready to go. I think he can beat Where's Waldo. I think the hype is pretty real. I don't think he's going to be the bust of the century, man. I'm going to have faith. And when you look at them side by side, you already know it's a big reach advantage, but you see the height advantage. Rebellist to Spain is just a much larger human. I'm going with Rebellist by knockout. I think he can put Where's Waldo to bed here. As far as the odds, Rebellis is a minus 250 favorite, whereas Waldo is a plus 210 underdog. Note that I've picked Where's Waldo every time in the past, and I've only been wrong once, and I'm picking against him here with Rebellis to Spain. I think Rebellis to Spain is going to find that chin. Um, as far as the odds, the Spain KO minus 170. Shit. The Spain first round minus 120, but you do get maybe plus 115 somewhere. The Spain by KO, TKO, first round. Again, I'm seeing the negative, minus 115 favorite status. I think Rebellis to Spain is going to knock Waldo out. That's my prediction in this fight. I think he can do it. I think he can sleep. Waldo waits here, 262 on both sides. But uh, obviously, Waldo carrying substantially more body fat. And holy shit, this picture of Waldo versus how he looks now is kind of fucking insane. It's not even the same guy. He looks like, holy shit, that's Waldo now? That's like, this This is like Tinder reality over here with Waldo. That's funny as shit. Oh, my God. All right, so the pick, Rebellis to Spain for the W. I think he's knocking where's Waldo out. Let's keep running up. Next fight on the card, we have Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres versus Sean the Sniper Woodson. I'm going with Sean the Sniper Woodson. I like the striking from distance. I like the reach advantage that he's coming in in this fight. And I also feel like the prime is on Sean Woodson's side. He's been rising with momentum as of late. And I do think he's going to outstrike Caceres over the course of three rounds. Caceres chose to strike with Giga Chikadze, who is a world-class kickboxer. I think he's probably going to choose to strike here 
with Sean Woodson as well. Now I am going to shrink myself down. We're going to check out Sean Woodson. Holy shit, Sean Woodson skinny. If you're talking about some of the freakiest looking fighters in the UFC, Sean Woodson's probably on the top of the fucking list. Looks like a damn legit exoskeleton. Holy shit. But uh, listen, I still think he wins the fight. This is always how he looks. It's not like this is a new thing. Not like he's cutting down for the first time. Then we got Quirky Caceres, per usual. Pretty decent shape. Looks very young for his age. But I think he's taking a loss, my brothers. I think so. I think we're going to see Sean Woodson pull it off on the scorecards. We'll check out the face-off, though, and we'll look. You're going to see the height difference here. I mean, it's doable, but I think Sean Woodson, it's a good matchup for him because Caceres is not a powerful puncher. Caceres is not heavy-handed by any means, and Sean Woodson is just clearly the better boxer, and he has way longer arms, and I think he's just more primed with a speed advantage too, and I think he's going to win the fist fight. Now, as far as the odds, Sean Woodson minus 225, not a bad tag. I mean, nah, it is. Fuck it. It's wide. It's ugly. It opened at minus 110, but like if it was minus 185, I wouldn't be crying. Minus 230 is a little uglier. Plus 195, Caceres. I just don't think Caceres is going to win. And I know the line's a, a chalky call for Sean Woodson. He's like a chalky locky territory, though. Minus 280 for the over. I think we're going over. Woodson decision, minus 105. I think he's getting a decision. I expect Sean Woodson to land pretty good strikes in this fight. More significant shots. Touch up Caceres, slip and move on him, and uh, make him chase a little bit and get the win. So, you know what? Cheers to that. I'm drinking some fucking iced coffee over here. Ah, cheers to Sean Woodson. Getting it done. Let's go, Sean Woodson. I'm hyped for him. I'm hyped for him. I'm a Sean Woodson fan. Let's keep on running up. We got more fights to talk about. We got more savagery. The next fight, Diego Ferreira versus Mataj Rambeski. If you're not picking Rambeski, what are you doing? That's it. That's the, that's the breakdown. Peace out. No, I'm fucking around. I'm going to actually get into it. But Rebeski should definitely win. If he doesn't beat Diego Ferreira, then he was the biggest bust of all time. Diego Ferreira is okay. Don't get it twisted. But he is 39. Now, we're going to check them out on the scales because I did notice something about Diego Ferreira. And I got to, you know, sometimes I got to be pretty positive. I can be an asshole once in a while. But overall, you guys know, it's mostly a positive vibe up in here from me. And I got to say, credit where it's due. This dude looks like he's somehow aging in reverse. This is the best I've seen Diego Ferreira look in a while. Shaving off that corny afro was also a good move as well. And I'm talking shit, but look at these curls. But still, I think it was a good move for him. Diego Ferreira looks very good. And I think that, you know, maybe it's a misread by us. No, I really don't think it's a misread. I still am confident that the little tank, Mr. Uh, Midget Muscle, Rebeshki, is going to dominate the fight. I believe in my guy, okay? I haven't seen the receding hairline look this badass since Tony Soprano. Okay? That's what we're dealing with here with the little mini tank. I'm going with Rebeshki. I think he gets a finish. KO win for him. Let's look at the face-off, though. Let's give uh, let's give Ferreira a chance to impress us. Ferreira, what are you bringing to the face-off? You bringing some animalistic behavior? Are you trying to intimidate with something crazy? No, he's not. He looks like a 2007 skateboarder. Nah, I'm not impressed. I don't know. Diego Ferreira lost me now on the face-off. Like, you can see the sags in his skin. He looks 46 on the side. If Rambeshki doesn't destroy him, I don't know, man. Retire from him, man. Rambeshki's going to work him, dog. It should be one-way traffic, ass-whooping central. That's the truth to be told about this fight. It shouldn't be competitive at all. Rambeshki should beat the shit out of him. For lack of a more sophisticated term, because fuck a sophisticated term here, he should beat the shit out of him. As far as the odds, though, Rebeshki, they told you to F off. Minus 510. Get the fuck out of my face. Plus 385 for her. Plus 370. What the fuck, man? The line has gotten so bad. Like, earlier in the week, dog, if you played it, if you played it early in the week, even minus, minus 265 in a parlay, minus 235. But now, fucking minus 450 is the best you're going to find. I think we are going under, minus 175. Rebeshki inside distance, minus 150. Rebeshki KO, plus 115. The truth be told, though, if he ends up winning a decision, would I be that shocked? No, because he took fucking Nick Fior the distance, and Nick Fior is kind of mid. He's okay, but he's kind of mid, bro. He's mid. He's been finishing lately, though. 
And he's normally a finisher. And that, that, come on, it was a UFC debut against Nick Fiore. I think Rebeski should finish the 39-year-old Diego Ferreira. For a last time, killed Michael Johnson. His eyes were shut, and he threw an overhand, and it landed flush. So that's the fucking fight game for you. Give me the side of our guy, Mataj Rambeski, for the win. All right, let's jump to our next fight on the card. It is our featured bout of the night. We got Alonzo Menefield versus Carlos Alberg. I've been picking Carlos Alberg to win all week long. I do think he gets it, but I think Menefield could be harder to deal with than maybe anticipated because he is pretty fucking heavy-handed. He's a physical presence for sure, and I think Alberg might be a tad overrated. I mean, the Daun Jung fight didn't get me saying, wow, you get what I'm saying? Like, I was like, eh, it's like, eh, the Daun Jung, I don't know, man. Not that... Of comparing matchups, but like Dustin Jacoby destroyed Daun Jung with relative ease. And then Alonzo Menafield did beat Dustin Jacoby on a competitive decision. Not using MMA math, Carlos Alberg also lost at one point to Nzechiku, who fucking also lost to Un Jung. I don't know, man. I think Alberg by decision makes more sense than anticipating him to destroy Alonzo Menafield. But if Alberg lost, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's look at the scales for these guys. Where are guys at here? All right, all right. Let's find them. We got Menafield first, all right? Alonzo Menafield is a fucking jacked Carlton from Fresh Prince, dog. Like, he looks in great fucking shape, and he looks ready to go. He's not a technical fighter, though, but technical doesn't always mean victory in the UFC, man. It's like the style of his game kind of works for him. Slapping shots, weird hooks, good durability. Menafield's ready. Like, Menafield is not coming into this fight with low confidence to lose to Carlos Alberg. He's not, like, looking at Carlos Alberg as the next uh, word of God prospect. We got Alberg down here. Carlos Alberg is good. I don't know how to describe it, though, with Alberg. Something about him. I just worry. I don't know. He's in good shape. He's got everything going for him. But I don't know. I'm still picking, but if you're on Menafield, I don't think he's a bad underdog for the line. We'll look at the lines in a sec. Let's just pull up the face-off first. Where's our face-off here? All right, here's our face-off. Respect between these guys. Menafield, Alberg, big height advantage for Alberg. Menafield kind of being submissive at the damn weigh-ins. I didn't really like that. He was a little too friendly. I think that Alberg decision makes a lot of sense. And I think it's going to go over one and a half rounds. That makes a lot of sense. Looking here, Alberg is a minus 265 favorite, though? I don't get it. Like, beating Daun Jung, Ihor Poteria, Nikolai Negumarianu, Tafan Chukwi, and Fabio Sharat, that gives you this tag? Like, yeah, some of them are impressive, but over Menafield, who's coming off a win over Dustin Jacoby? It's just almost like I want to fucking go underdog bet line. Because of the fucking blatant disrespect. It shouldn't look like this. It should be minus 150 for Alberg. So I think Alberg could be risky if you got him in all your parlays. I'm picking him to win still, but I don't know, man. Menafield's a game motherfucker, bro. Over one and a half minus 160 makes sense to me. Menafield decision is plus 650. He could steal a decision, man. He could steal a decision. I'm going to pick Menafield. Or excuse me, I'm going to pick Alberg, but now the fucking, fucking hell. Is this the universe trying to get me to pick flip? Oh, the universe might be trying to get me to pick flip, man. I don't want to pick flip, though. I wasn't, I, guys, I never wrote down, yo, pick flip. I never came here to pick flip. I've been doing real good with pick flips, but I just can't do it. But I'll tell you this I don't think Alonzo Menafield is a bad underdog. I think that. He is a tricky fight for Alberg, but I am going to anticipate Alberg to win a decision. I'm going to say this fight looks harder and closer than a minus 275 tag. So I'm going to stick with Alberg, but, you know, the confidence on the bet of Alberg's side is not there. It's more of a 50 50 fight to me. I give a slight lean towards Alberg getting it done, though. That's where my head's at with this fight. Next fight on the card is our co main. We got Joaquin Buckley versus Nursultan Rizzi Boyev. And I've been talking a lot of shit. I've been saying Rizzi Boyev, no way he's making the weight. He's coming in over. I guess I didn't say no way. But I said I wouldn't be surprised if he was over. I'm like, how the fuck six weeks ago he's fighting at 85? Now he's 170. 
Dude's a fucking freak of nature because he made 170.3 and he's 6'5", dog. I don't understand. And he's got way more muscle than Trey Waters, who's also 6'5 and 170. I've been picking Buckley all week, though. I think he's getting disrespected. Let's look at this here. Let's look at this here. Where's our guy? Where's, where's fucking Rizzy Boyev? Rizzy Boyev is the real-life flat Stanley. The dude's about as flat as you can get. It doesn't even make sense to me. He's not human. How the fuck did he shrink down to 170 pounds at 6'5"? I know he's skinny, but still, holy shit. He made the weight. Respect to him making the weight. That blew my fucking mind that he came in so smoothly. Now, on the other side, Joaquin Buckley. You know, they used to say he looked like Tyler the Creator and like Nick Cannon have, have a baby. Like, I don't know. I don't see it right now. I see Bubba from Forrest Gump is the lookalike. For him, and I'm telling you, you see it now, you can't unsee it. That's Bubba from Forrest Gump to me. And listen, some good things are coming to Bubba this fucking Saturday. I'm picking him to win by knockout, third round, or decision. To be honest, I'm kind of fucking being arrogant as fuck, saying knockout for sure. Nah, I do think Buckley can beat Rizzy Boyev. I know Rizzy Boyev may wait. I know he's looking slender. <sighs> I just don't believe. I don't believe. I don't believe, brother. I don't think because you're 6'5", you're a lock. Buckley could catch him over the top for sure. Rizzy Boyev was looking okay striking with Dumas, but Dumas got his eyes fucking clawed out. I'm going to say Buckley wins this thing and keeps the momentum going in his favor. I'm believing in Buckley, bro. I believe in Buck. I believe in fucking Bubba. Joaquin Bubba Buckley at minus 133 is my official pick. Rizzy Boyev plus 113. I think Buckley's going to beat him. Over one and a half, minus 145, pretty sensible. Uh, Buckley by decision all the way up at plus 425 with a KO only at plus 130. Buckley in round three, plus 750, but upwards of plus 900. I think Buckley could get a later stoppage, or I think Buckley could win it by a decision here. I know a lot of people are saying, Rizzy boy by sub, he's going to take him to the ground and destroy Buckley. But Joaquin Buckley is not a slouch on the floor. Look at this. Zero submission losses, to be fair. Like... I know Rizzy Boy have got a lot of sub wins, but against Salamis, dog, against no name fighters, Joaquin Buckley can beat Nersalt and Rizzy Boy. If Annie's at home in St. Louis, he ain't losing at home. Give me Buckley for the win. I'm going against the EV in this fight. Still, no pick flip from me. Joaquin Buckley to get it done, baby. Let's go. Let's jump to our main event of the evening. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash the likes. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We have Derek Lewis versus Rodrigo Nascimento. I've been picking Derek Lewis to win all week. I think Derek Lewis is going to absolutely starch Rodrigo Nascimento. I think he's going to knock him out in probably the first round. Nascimento shouldn't even be in there with him. I think Nascimento's not good. I think he's meh at best. He, he's low tier. Like, come on, man. Win over Don Telmay's decision, not impressive. Ilya Latifi split decision in fucking a year ago, not impressive. Tanner Bozier split, never really impressive here. If you're trying to fight top caliber like Derek Lewis, the Boldeno contest, but he did win. Uh, Chris Dawkins laid him out. He's a victim of Chris Dawkins, and you know, Chris Dawkins still has nightmares about Derek Lewis. So I think that Derek Lewis wins by KO. Now we're going to check him out on the scales. Note. Actually, let's read the weights off. 264 and 265. So Lewis is actually a pound lighter than Nascimento. Nascimento, he's like the fat kid at the pool. He doesn't take his shirt off. We're analyzing the damn weigh-ins. I need to see what's under there. I'll tell you what's under Jello, Gelatin, my man. Show the titties, bro. Sugar tits. Show them to us, all right? Come on. Come on, bro. Fucking shirt on the whole time. I don't know. That shouldn't even be allowed. You shouldn't be allowed, bro. Because what if, I don't know, he's, what if he's got staph infection? I don't know. What if he's fucking looking fatter than ever before? We need to see what we're working with betting-wise. They should force it. Strip him. <laughs> Strip him down. <laughs> and then on the other side, we got D. Lou, Derek Lewis. Looking like a fucking gorilla size, bro. Thick. Ready to rock. Not as shredded, maybe, as other fights. But it's not cemento. He won't need it. I think Derek Lewis is going to devastate him. I'm going Dev Derek Lewis by knockout. If that doesn't happen, my God, I might cry. I might cry. I might cry if D. Lou loses, man. And he's not going to lose to Nascimento. Nascimento is not good, man. And, and look at them face-to-face. -face. Derek Lewis, the bigger dude, intense at the face-off. I think Nascimento knew he's going to be a victim of a Derek Lewis knockout because I saw him looking terrified at the damn face-off. He didn't look confident. 
He didn't look confident at all. He looked terrified. And I think Derek Lewis is going to punch a hole through his damn face. Derek Lewis knockout. Let's look at the odds for the fight. Derek Lewis is minus 156 as the favorite. Nascimento plus 136 as the underdog. I'm going with Derek Lewis to win. Uh, knockout win for D. Lou currently sits at minus 145. Best is minus 135. So plus, plus 190 for Lewis in round one. And then plus 450 for Lewis in round two. I mean, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I think he's got a real good chance to win. I'm going with Derek Lewis to devastate Nascimento. And I think first to second round KO, I think minus 160 is a fair money line. I'm going Derek Lewis via knockout. Nascimento's striking is eh at best. His grappling is not very good. It's okay. I mean, it's decent compared to heavyweight MMA, but like as a whole landscape, it's not impressive. And he's not going to be the guy to beat Derek Lewis. He's not coming from the bottom tier of the heavyweight division or bottom rankings and then taking out legendary D. Lou. I think D. Lou's still got some sick knockouts left in him, even at 39, because the last thing to go is that power. And he's not going to lose to Nascimento. So we're going Derek Lewis to win the main event, and I'm calling knockout. Those are the predictions for UFC St. Louis, but I ain't done yet, okay? Because the post weigh in parlays have to commence. And we lost the fight. Unfortunately, Kevin Jusset, who was a confident pick for me, uh, his fight with Jared Gooden got canceled. Gooden not medically cleared. Fight will not go forth, but Jusset made weight. Hopefully, he gets a quick turnaround. Maybe he stays stateside. We can get him into a fight soon. If not, at least pay the dude his full purse. All right, so who are we going to put in to a parlay? Well, I do think that. Rabeshki should definitely win. Where's that guy Rabeshki at? Like, if he's losing, come on. Minus 500, though. Are you kidding me? I think we go Rabeshki here. I know he's 5-1, to one, but bear with me for a second. And then I think that I'm looking for favorites. I'm not looking for an underdog onslaught here. I think that from here, I might have to pull the fucking sniper shot. I want to do a heavyweight. I want to do Rebellis, but I'm almost thinking Sean Woodson might be the fill-in for Jusa at minus 130 here. Sean Woodson should win. These two together, I do think hit. Now, if you don't like Sean Woodson for whatever reason, or maybe just add to him, him and Rebellis, plus 150 for those three, I think those are winners as well. Rumbeshki seems like a staple piece for all the parlays. Like He seems like a sure winner here. The over rounds for the ladies, what do we got? Minus 214. What if we did double ladies overs? I mean, what are the odds they get finishes, you know? Minus 136 for Rabeshki with two overs with the lady fights. Not a terrible idea. Now, if you are looking for the knockout parlay, maybe you're going Rebellus to Spain via KO, which is minus 170, which is actually kind of shit, but it's fine. Derek Lewis by KO as well which is minus 135. You do get plus money for both of them to win by KO, which is their most likely methods of victory in all actuality. And if you threw that in with potentially throwing uh, the side of Rebeshki, now it's plus 233 with the over in this lady's fight. You got the plus 306. It's three to one is better than nothing, but it's not great. I understand. Underdog call time. Okay, so underdog call time. If we go with underdog Billy Goff in a parlay, and let's say we put him up with uh, Rambeshki, what are we getting? Plus 188. Okay, what do I want to add in? I mean, this is fucking, you chance your, your whole game on it. You go McKinney plus 590, but what if you're sick? What if you're sick in the head? You go, where's McKinney first round? McKinney wins in round one, plus 280 available. Now you got plus 994. If McKinney wins in the first round with this one, Rebeshki, Golf, McKinney, then you throw the over in the ladies' fight. This is degenerate as fuck. I'm not even recommending anybody think about this, but I had to do it. I had to see what it was at. And then you leave it all. Do you leave it all on Derek Lewis at the top? Plus 2,000. Damn, son. That'd be crazy. Plus 2,075. Very risky, not saying to throw your life savings on it. The safe calls, like an alternate to the earlier uh, high confidence would be like Woodson Lewis for plus 140, and then boom, 
Rebeshki plus 190. But if you don't like D. Lou, like I know some people are not crazy about Derek Lewis. They worry about him at this point in his fucking fighting career. And I guess it's understandable per se. Maybe you throw an underdog in the mix. Woodson, Rebeshki, Johnson plus 290. Maybe you have Billy Goff on your lineup. Then you're riding with plus 325. Maybe you're going double dog plus 835. You're a savage there. I wish Jusel was still in the mix. You could go Vyacheslav Barshev. You could throw him in, but I don't know, man. Something's telling me be cautious with this fight, especially. Especially with this one. The money line's on Richie Torres. Risky, man. I think the over is better. The over in this one. Woodson, Rebeshki, and the over here. You still get plus 116. That's a money call. It's like the more I talk about it, it's like the parlays just get better and better. Golf, plus 419. I'm going to go Rebellis. I'm going to have Faith, plus 635. D. Lou at the top, plus 1,097. What if you just said, fuck it, I'm going against the grain, give me Menafield, then you got plus 3,000. Yeah, plus 1,097 is fair. The Buckley fight, that's going to be a game fight. Seeing how good Rizzy Boyov looked on the scale, not to say Buckley isn't. I mean, it lost the confidence that I had earlier in the week. Earlier in the week, I was like, bro, Buckley going to lay him out for sure. It's a fucking dog fight. And in a long shot parlay will be more for the risk rather than the confidence. But be cautious with your parlays, man. Bet it intelligently. The safer, the safe calls, the two fighter plays are your most high likelihood for success. Playing some overs in your lineup. Or maybe you're like, yo, do I just go under here? We go under two and a half with McKinney Rebovics. Over with the ladies here. And then fuck another ladies fight. We go over. Or Charles Johnson's over. What if we go all overs? Over and under savagery only. And we go Richie. Go the over. Plus 136 for under in the McKinney fight. Over in the Richie fight. Over in the Johnson fight. And over in the Hardy Aldrich fight. Three straight fights going this. Or no, two straight going distance. And then to be a finish probably in the Billy Golf fight. This is a savage call, man. All four. But that intelligently. It's, it's a little degenerate. But there are some over-unders that are live here in these matchups. Guys, UFC St. Louis, I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Definitely show some love and smash the like button. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you all for tuning in. Daily content coming, so don't miss it. Keep it locked in. Got the uh, full car fight companion tomorrow. I can't wait for it. Thank you guys all so much. W's in the comments if you got nothing to say, but definitely let me know what you thought of the picks down below. And let me know if you got any pick flips. Did anything after weigh-ins change your mind? Even though I'm still riding steady with the early picks, I know some of you savages might be pick flipping, so let your boy know. Thanks, guys. See you on the next one. Peace out.